If you are ready, I'm gonna teach you all about the mushrooms on the board in front of you. So we're gonna start here on the far left side and I'm gonna work my way around. Okay, so if you have a question, just be patient because um, I'm gonna try to get every single mushroom. If I miss something, let me know. Okay, so here we have a bunch of honey mushrooms. So I'm pretty sure that what we found are Armillaria ostoyae. So these are the same kind of honey mushrooms that grow in the world's biggest organism, the humongous fungus. Um, so we found a patch of dead trees and they were just covered in these honey mushrooms. Um, there's also this other kind of honey mushroom, Armillaria, we found. These are a little more yellow and that made me think that these might actually be Armillaria malaya. They might not be, they might just both be ostoyae, but I think that these are malaya and that these are ostoyae. So ostoyae, malaya, because they're a little bit yellower. As we go up here, um, there is Gomphus clavitus, the pig's ear. So this is another, uh, this is a mycorrhizal mushroom, whereas the honey mushrooms are parasitic and then saprobic, so they kill a tree and then uh, eat the tree. Whereas these are living in symbiosis with the trees and not killing the tree. Instead, they're dependent on the tree. Um, these are kind of half decent to mediocre edibles. Often they have a bunch of bug damage, but these were pretty good. And they're kind of purple and they have these decurrent gills. They call them like purple chanterelles, but they are not chanterelles. They're in Gomphus uh, and they are actually related to Romaria and other claveloid mushrooms. Um, but I like to boil these and then use them as kind of a filler mushroom. Um, as I said earlier, none of these are hallucinogenic, none of these are illegal, so please do not report me because I'm just trying to teach people about mushrooms and what's, you know, what's safe to eat. Um, most of the things I'm going to show you are a safe to eat mushroom, and if they're not, I'll tell you otherwise, okay? Um, so this is the pig's ear, Gomphus clavitus. I'm going to just boil that and cook it real quick. Um, this is a Kokora, an edible Amanita you can find out on the coast. And so it has these distinguishing features of striations on the edge of the cap. It has a non-bulbous base of the mushroom, non-bulbous vulva. The inside of the stipe, I'm not going to cut open right now, but the inside of the stipe is hollow and is full of sort of a white pith. It has this cream-colored annulus right around the, the base of the thing. Um, so this is another defining feature of Amanitas, but keep an eye on the color of this because this is not white, this is cream colored, and even the gills are kind of cream colored. And so all of those features combined tell me that this is Kokora and it's a safe to eat Amanita. If you're a beginner, don't go near Amanitas, don't eat Amanitas, just be safer. So the next mushroom, and this is probably the coolest like edible one we found today, is the Matsutake. So this is Tricholoma murulanium. Mural um, this is Matsutake. These are really highly sought after beautiful elbow mushrooms. They're super solid, super meaty. The bottom usually has a little bit of sort of sandy stuff on it. We trimmed it off to keep the, the basket clean. This is an amazing sort of seafood, red hot, like cinnamon type aroma. Uh, it's very unique in the world of mushrooms and it's very special because it's so meaty and it's so solid and it has this very special flavor. Uh, it works best in kind of wet, rice dishes and works really well with like a Japanese flavor palette. So I often cook this with like dashi and miso, uh, hoisin sauce, but it's not so good if you just try frying it up in butter or if you cooked it in red wine kind of thing, it, it doesn't work super well with Western flavors. So I think it works much better with like seafood and, uh, and Eastern, especially Japanese flavors, which are a little more subtle than like a really in your face soy sauce kind of thing. Although I have taken these and soaked them in soy sauce and those are really good. I've also soaked them in, uh, in sake and that's really good. Here in California, these grow almost exclusively under tan oak, uh, whereas other places they will grow under pine. I mean, often they're called pine mushrooms, but that's a stupid name because they grow under spruce and pine and, and all sorts of different trees. Um, so calling them a pine mushroom is factually incorrect. Um, so Mansitake is at least a better name and they're technically a tricholoma, so that's, that's what I call them. But hopefully you can hear just kind of how solid that is. So that's, that's pretty awesome. In the back is a very cool mushroom. It's this blue polypore. So there's not many blue mushrooms out there in general, uh, but a blue polypore is really wild looking. And this is actually Albatrellus uh, fledii. So super solid, super tappy, um, enrolled cap margin still, but we found huge clusters of this stuff. It is kind of a weird smell. Um, oh, well, fine. There, Matsutake means pine in Japanese. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm stupid. Anyhow, we, maybe we should find a better name for Matsis because um, they're, you know, here they grow with pine. 
uh, grow with tan oak, not just pine. In, Cal in uh, Oregon, they grow with spruce. And then I think somewhere up towards the, the Pacific Northwest, they switch over to pine. But anyhow, this is an absolutely beautiful mushroom. It has this like sort of suede velvet blue texture on top and just like beautiful blue color. And then underneath is just like shockingly white. Um, and it has, it's kind of a weird, slightly off-putting smell. I've tried eating this once before and I didn't love it, but there was so much of it. I had to bring a couple home just to, just to see, you know, what it was going to be like. And they just, they look pretty. Okay. So going around, here's a butter bully. We found this one. It was pretty eaten out already. And so the middle of the stipe was just full of bugs. Um, so I cut that part out. Um, kind of pinky on top, yellow gills, stains super blue when you, when you mess around with it. Um, butter bleeds are delicious. I'm going to try to cook this up quickly just to, to process it. Um, we also found a Satan's bully, which is inedible, poisonous. We didn't bring that home, but we cut it up on video, which was pretty cool. Um, here's a queen bully. So here's like a very young queen bully. And here's an older, more mature queen bully. And I'm going to give these a little tap to give you a sense of density. So here's a young one. Here's that tap. Pretty high pitched tap. And then on a more mature specimen, sounds a little more hollow. And on one that's much more mature, it's much, much more hollow. So again, this is like showing you guys the difference in the density when I tap these mushrooms because it's part of why I'm always tapping mushrooms. It talks to me about the density and the quality of that mushroom. Um, while we're on it, I'll go ahead and talk about this as a, a scaber stock, Lexinum. This is the apple bolete, uh, Lexinum manzanite. And they're scaber stocks because they have all these little black dots on the stipe. Um, these are another mycorrhizal mushroom. Uh, everything I've shown you so far is edible. Uh, Lexinums are edible with caution because some people can experience GI upset from them. I never have, but other people have reported that. Um, just be careful, cook it well. You know, try a small bite before you eat too much. Uh, this is another good one. Ray, if you're here, and you may appreciate knowing this, uh, these are the Midnight Entoloma. This is a uh, Entoloma, so it has pink uh, spores. If I were to make a, a spore print of this, it would have pink spores. And you can actually see the gills are kind of pinky looking. Um, but this, the Midnight Entoloma is very common in like redwood uh, coastal habitats. Uh, and it's, it's actually a pretty decent edible. It tastes vaguely like cucumber, um, but it's pretty good. Just if you get a good one, make sure there's no bugs in it. Get them pretty fresh and younger where the caps are still enrolled. Um, just cook them in butter. They're really good. Midnight Entoloma is a fantastic uh, mushroom. Not all Entolomas are edible, but these ones are. And they're pretty easy to ID because they're sort of dark steely blue on the cap and on the stem. And um, they're super common all over the place and most people don't, don't eat Entolomas. So the Midnight Entoloma is easy to ID and pretty tasty. Um, then I have some other, I have a couple different kinds of Swillis. There's a lot of Swillis out of the park where we were. Uh, and these have little yellow angled pores. This one is a, like a sticky brown top. Um, there's, I think, I think this is Swillis luteus maybe. And then this is Swillis cerulescens. This is ones that grows with, um, with Doug fir. And then these are Swillis ponderosus, and these ones are growing with pine. So there's at least three. We saw probably five or six, seven different Swillis species out there today. Um, this is a funky looking one. I've never eaten this one, but I've heard it's edible and I might try it, but the yellow color is kind of like crazy and a little off-putting. So this is uh, Pulverobolitis revenelii, I think, something like that, but really like crazy yellow highlighter color. Um, and kind of this like pinky reddish orange suede top and just wild. It's even more like brilliant when you first find it. It stains your fingers kind of yellow when you first touch it. Um, I have a couple kinds of rustlers. I disclaimer, I don't know if these rustlers are edible or not. I'm not super good at IDing rustlers. Um, as long as they're not super red rustlers, they're usually edible, but you can taste them and see if they're acrid or bitter. I just brought these home because I thought they were kind of pretty. It's like pinky, pretty pinky color. And this like one has like blush on the stem. This could be a shrimp rustler, but I don't even know. Um, so it's pretty cool. Almost to the end of the pile here. Uh, we're doing pretty well. Uh, so we've got this beautiful compact yellow Romeria formosus. You can see it's, it's all, it like almost looks like cauliflower right now. It's so tight, hasn't grown up. Um, and then these are 
This is tan oak red. So this is a and this is an inedible Romeria. I would not recommend eating yellow Romeria on the coast during winter. It can definitely give you the shits. Um, this one is edible, although I would be careful how much you eat because Romeria in general can give you the shits. Uh, but this is what's known as tan oak red. I don't know if we have a species name for it yet, but I just love like those beautiful little like red bits in the end of the um, that sort of crown crown coral things. They're so so cool. Um, and then we just have a huge pile of oyster mushrooms. There's there's a ton of oyster mushrooms out there. So. Here we go, bunch of bunch of oysters, um, white spores grown on dead wood. Um, they have an offset stipe and stem. I think this is probably uh, Pleurotus pulmonaris or something similar, um, but just a really like nice big set of oyster mushrooms that were all over the place. And then I have one uh, rhizopogon. So this is sort of a truffle-like fungus. It's not a truffle. It doesn't smell like a truffle, although it does smell stinky. It doesn't have the, the nuance or the um, complexity of a, of a real truffle but it's sort of a fake truffle. And uh, and technically rhizopogon is edible, although it has the texture of like floral foam. So when I tried eating it, I did, I did not enjoy it. Um, so pretty much everything here on the board is edible except for this yellow Romeria, I wouldn't recommend. It's not gonna kill you, I don't think it's really toxic, it's just gonna give you the shits. So this is a cool one and it does look like cauliflower. And, uh, and these two rustlers, um, these are most likely an edible variety, but I'm not super good at IDing rustlers, so I don't, I don't know, but. Anyhow, that, that is it. Pretty much everything on here is edible. Uh, everything we found today out on the Sonoma Coast. Uh, it's a really awesome selection of mushrooms. I'll take you through kind of one more time just so you can see, see everything from a different angle. So here's all of our honey mushrooms. These are malaria. Here's the gomphus clavitus, the pig's ear, kind of purple chanterelle looking thing. It is not a chanterelle, um, but it kind of looks like one because it has those decurrent gills. Here's these kokoras, these beautiful edible amanitas. They do taste kind of fishy. I don't love the flavor of them, but they have such great texture. It's hard not to pick them and they're all over the place. These are the bell of the ball, the uh, the beautiful matsutake that we found out there. Amazing smell, tricholoma, uh, merulanium. These are the albatrellus fledii, the sheep's head polypore, this beautiful, beautiful blue polypore. Just amazing, it's mycorrhizal. So it's growing straight out of the ground in huge clusters. We found like 20 of these clusters. So I don't know if I really want to eat this that much, but there's so much of it out there. I just picked a couple um, to try it out and to, to play around with. This was a butter bowl eat. It has seen better days, but I'm gonna still try to eat it up. This is a couple of different queen bowl eats. Um, so they have these sort of darker, darker tan tops. I did find one king bowl eat, which has this lighter brown top, but it was a little bit eaten up by bugs. So I kind of edited out the worst parts of it. So we have these midnight antelomas. Um, which are great, pretty good edibles. Uh, the scaver stock here, which is good. Um, Swillis, a couple different kinds of Swillis, the powdery sulfur bolete, those rustlers, the tano cromaria, the romaria formosus, and the uh, oyster mushrooms, and then our one little uh, rise of pogon. So that's, that's what's on the board. Uh, the most beneficial mushroom in your opinion is really any edible mushroom. Uh, I know a lot of people think that there's health benefits to be had with mushrooms, and there are, but all mushrooms pretty much will give you that health benefit. Just eat more mushrooms. Uh, I'm not going to say that there's one that's better or worse for you health-wise than any other. I think all mushrooms are pretty darn good for you to eat, so I recommend you just eat more mushrooms. What I do recommend is eating a large diversity of mushrooms, so I don't think like ascribing lots of health benefits to one particular mushroom is, is useful. I think it's better just eat a mixed diet of a lot of different things, and you're going to be healthier. Than, uh, than if you try to just take one supplement mushroom and think that's gonna somehow solve your problems, it won't. If something is too good to be true, it is. So Matsutake sake is great. You can also pickle Matsutake. What's the difference between poisonous and hallucinogenic? Well, poisonous makes you sick and hallucinogenic makes you trip. Um, hallucinogens are more accurately referred to as entheogens and poisonous mushrooms, I would call a toxic mushroom, poisonous mushroom. Um, but there are poisonous mushrooms that can make you trip. Uh, although Amadeus muscaria is poisonous, it is not deadly toxic. And as an entheogen, it's not a very effective entheogen because it doesn't contain psilocybin, it contains muscimol, which is a fully legal compound. You can buy it on the internet if you really want to try it. It's similar to like a GHB date rape drug type thing and just makes you have like weird uh, sleepy delusions. But I wouldn't say it's particularly enjoyable. 
Uh, yes, I forged all this today. I was out on the coast. Um, Sonoma Coast is where we were. Uh, if you want to find Matsutake, it really depends on where you live. But if you live in California, you're going to find Matsutake under tan oak, most likely, on a hillside, probably with sand. 